Okay guys, if you're thinking about doing your own paint job, this video is for you. Okay guys, in this video I'll share with you how I do paint job at home or in the garage. So before we get started, before we get to actual uh, spraying or prepping, there are a couple of things I like to talk about. And first is the tools. First of all, if you're on a tight budget, if you got no money but you got into a fender bender and you're willing to uh, invest your own uh, time and elbow grease, this is the cheapest option. You can get one of these guns, I purchased this gun about a year ago, with the coupon it was like $10. Regular price, which I purchased a couple days ago, is like $16 from the Harbor Freight. This is probably the cheapest option you have. If you're planning to do more paint jobs down the road in the future, I would recommend investing in, in a professional gun. These three right here are professional guns and uh, they're quite a bit more expensive uh, you're looking in 500 dollar range um, i can't remember exactly the price for these two because i purchased them like about 15 years ago um, but this right here i purchased about six months ago i actually updated my old one which was exactly the same gun with it with exactly the same tip i've used this gun for last uh i would say eight years this gun made in Japan, this is an excellent gun. These uh, Satas, they, they're made in uh, Germany. I believe it's in Germany. Uh, these are top of the line guns. I've purchased this one about six months ago for about 450 bucks. This gun right here actually doesn't come with the cup, but it does come in a kit like this, which comes with the PPS system um, and it's a starter kit. You will have your cup, lid, um, adapter, um, and one liner. You would have to buy your own uh, liners. I'm gonna put a link in, down in the description for this gun. This is gun definitely worth buying. Okay, so the next thing I like to talk about is an air supply. What I have right here is a 3 8 of an inch hose. I would definitely recommend getting 3 8 if you're using uh, HVLP or uh, LVLP uh, guns. And I would definitely recommend getting uh, high flow um, fittings for this. Uh, now, I would highly recommend investing in uh, air filtration or air dryer system. The one that I'm using, I actually purchased it used years ago. Uh, it's a DAD 500, Devilbis DAD 500. If you can afford it, I would definitely recommend getting it. Another thing that I would recommend getting is the air pressure regulator. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight. I've never used it before. We're gonna test it out. So my paint job usually consists out of three stages. Stage one would be prep, stage two application, and stage three finish. And by finish I mean sanding and the buffing. And the reason why I have to do buffing is probably obvious because I'm painting in my garage and let me show you uh, what it looks like when you turn the lights off in here. I'm okay! I hope you can see what flies in the air, all these uh, dust uh, particles. These are small um, they're not necessarily going to be visible, but uh, some of the larger ones, um, which will end up in a clear coat, they're going to be visible. So guys, let's talk about supplies. Let's talk about paint first. There are about two uh, companies, two brands that I mostly use, DuPont and PPG. Both of these companies have their top lines and value lines. The DuPont top line, I believe it's a chroma base and the uh, value line would be Nason. Uh, PPG on the other hand, uh, their top line would be Deltron, this right here, and the uh, value line would be Omni or Omni Plus. My supplier, my paint supplier uh, started carrying this uh, brand 
uh, about a year ago I started using this brand and I really like it quart of this paint on the average is about uh, 40 50 dollars obviously depend on the color um, compared to DBC which is about um, I would say 150 200 dollars uh, for a quart and again it depends on the color this particular color is for the Tesla and it's just a simple dark blue uh, color it's got metallic in it it's probably got pearls in it but it's there's nothing fancy about this color besides the name and the quart of this paint is about $270 so um, compare 270 and for the quart this is a pint for the quart of uh, Wanda with the similar color without name Tesla would be like 40 or $50 let's move on to uh, clear coat this is the best clear coat for the money in my opinion this is a European uh, clear I think the kit was about $90 or $100 you get in seven liters it's a five liter and two and a half liter hardener again it's a thicker clear but I actually like it this way because it, it flows pretty good um, for the money I mean you're paying a hundred dollars for a seven liters I think it's an excellent clear and rest of the stuff is pretty pretty simple this is a lacquer thinner um, I have uh, some reducer uh, pre-clean or wax remover um, you definitely want to use uh, this uh, type of towel for the paint job now don't use uh, regular paper towels um, tack rag and uh, strainers cups real wool pad don't buy a synthetic uh, wool uh, pad buy an actual wool pad uh, foam pad for your finish steps and that's that's about it let's get to paint okay guys so now we are on to a prep stage uh, of this project first thing that you should do is clean all your panels with soap and water and take your time clean them real good the second thing you should do is inspect all the panels for small dents that you might miss or scratches make sure you, that you're gonna take care of them at this stage and um, third we're gonna sand sandpaper grit is gonna depend on the uh, product the parts that are gonna get painted uh, actual base coat we're gonna send with the 400 uh, grit sandpaper and the parts that only gonna get uh, clear like in case if you are blending your clear uh, you can just do a scuff pad like this and um, I would highly recommend to use product like this uh, scuff stuff uh, it comes in a smaller bottle um, it's it's a paste that has a small grit in it and uh, it helps you get panel really uh, dull um, for the paint Okay guys so we're all done with the prep let's get to the next stage which is painting and there are several things that you need to consider first is your airflow um, what I would suggest you can uh, and I've seen other people doing it you can raise your garage door a little bit and set a couple of uh, fans uh, like a Walmart uh, $10 uh, type of uh, fans right underneath the garage door and that way you can uh, control overspray to some degree what I've set up, I've set up this uh, tarp wall and there is actually another one on this side and I'm basically creating a tunnel uh, with my gable fan and open door is basically I'm controlling overspray this way 
Another thing that you should consider is a protective gear. You can get a cheap five or ten dollar uh, painter suit and definitely get one of these. Okay guys, so I've got my paint in the cup and let me show you how I set up my gun. This knob right here is a fan knob. If I'm doing a large panel, I open this knob all the way out and um, open my fan as wide as possible. This knob right here controls the amount of fluid goes into the tip. And uh, usually I turn it all the way in and then back it out about two and a half turns, maybe two turns as a starting point. Let's see what I get. I hold my gun about four to eight inches from the surface. Let's see if we can do a little bit more. So I'm pretty happy with this. I can adjust it on the fly as I'm gonna be doing uh, paint. I can either turn it in or turn it out. But this right here is pretty much what I'm looking for. Since I decided to test both guns for this project, uh, let's uh, adjust uh, another gun. This uh, manual for this gun calls uh, for an air range between 20 and 70 psi which is kind of unusual for HVLP. HVLP usually is a lower pressure but uh, um, I'm, I'm getting better optimization um, at about 40 psi so out of the box had a completely dead battery and the uh, battery is not uh, replaceable on this uh, regulator I had to actually crack uh, open it the other uh, thing, it's supposed to have a quarter inch uh, standard uh, thread and apparently it's not. I could only get about uh, one and a half turn on this uh, uh, fitting. So, I mean, needless to say, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend buying this regulator. So, this is set at about 40 PSI and um, same principle. I open my fan all the way out and uh, about two and a half turns on this knob. Um, so let's see what we get. That looks pretty good. Okay guys, so I'm ready to spray. Right before I spray, I'm gonna run down all these panels with the pre-clean and the towel again. And then I'm gonna run my uh, tech rag to pick up uh, whatever dust is on the surface. Now, the, I'm going to spray it in a 50-50 pattern. So that means my first pass is going to be full pass and my second pass is going to overlap 50% of the previous pass. So overlap 50%. One thing that is very important to me is lighting. I can have a best gun, best materials, best uh, setup, but if, if you have no light, I mean, the, the job is not going to be good. So, obviously in, in, in the garage I, I only have overhead uh, lights and that's not enough. So, I purchased these. These are LED. Um, I believe they were like $10 from Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, at least some sort of light. Uh, and I've got one set right here where my camera is. And I'm going to set another one just on that side.
got uh, a little bit of a reaction from this uh, primer. This is the first time I'm using this primer and uh, for some reason it gave me a hard time. Right there, if uh, camera will focus on it, um, there was a tiny dent that I found right before I started uh, uh, doing my prep for the for paint and I found a dent and I decided to do a quick uh, repair and use this primer right here high build primer uh, and for some reason it's it lifted um, or gave me some sort of uh, reaction and the same thing I'm using the same primer on this uh, bumper and uh, I also got this kind of uh, reaction or lift on this uh, bumper but thankfully this color is pretty dark although it does have a metallic in it it's really dark and um, these imperfections hopefully won't be uh, as visible as if it would be uh, like a light uh, metallic Okay guys, so it's been about 40 hours since we sprayed these panels. Um, it actually takes usually two to four weeks for uh, materials to completely cure, depend on uh, material, depend on uh, weather, depend on uh, um, how you apply the material. But uh, it's been about 40 hours and these panels are ready to be handled. First, I'm going to send them down with a 1000 grit sandpaper and then I'm going to move up to a 2000 grit sandpaper. After that, I'm going to use a wool pad with the rubbing compound and then I'm going to use a foam pad and a swirl remover. Okay guys, we're all done with these panels, they are buffed and washed. Unfortunately, I did have an issue with the driver's side fender. There was an issue with the spray can uh, 
high build primer it's either shrunk or lifted i think it's shrunk and uh, it gave me a problem with the clear as well uh, as a base coat and I, as i was trying to flood it with the clear trying to um, fix the problem i made a nasty run and uh, I'm not even gonna attempt to um, buff that uh, run out because I'm sure that I'm gonna cut through paint so I'm just gonna repaint uh, that fender but uh, as far as these parts um, hopefully you can see how they turned out this fender uh, right here is the fender that I painted with that uh, $15 gun and um, it turned out really well just just to show you that you really can get a decent results with a cheap gun and a paint job at home and as far as this bumper um, I only buffed out top portion of this bumper there there was no need for me to buff a lower part because it's gonna get chipped anyway with the stones from the highway from driving if you guys find this video helpful, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that subscribe and bell uh, notification button so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you in the next one.